Disney music playing right now. <laughs> Actually, when we were at the show the other night, I felt like I heard, like, someone started a song, and I was like, oh my goodness, it sounds like our intro music. David, did you plagiarize? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Successfully Unsigned. I am here with a very special guest, Derek Jones. This has been many, many months in the making. <laughs> many. So thank you, Derek, for um, being so patient with us and uh, our many, many reschedules. Uh, he's here with all of these friends of ours, so glad he could be here. Um so I feel like, honestly, we should have been recording the last hour because me and him just had like an hour long conversation right. all about just local music and everything. And um, so I guess since we've already talked a little bit about that, we'll, you know, maybe rehash a little bit. Yeah, of course. But uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself, like where you're from. I think you mentioned New York yeah. and uh, just kind of talk about your upbringing, especially related to the music industry. Yeah. Well, uh, when I I grew up in central New York near Syracuse, mm -hmm. um, more outside in farm country in a town called Barneville, New York, where nothing ever happened. And as a young person growing up, I became obsessed with music because I didn't really have a lot of things to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's like farming and that's about it. You know? Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, I be I joined a band when I was young with the only musicians in my school and you know, I was a singer and I became obsessed with music like more and more and more. We moved to Boston, okay. when I graduated high school, did that for a few years. And then I tried to do the normal life thing for about like 10 to 15 years. Ooh. Yeah. I worked, <laughs> I worked at a hospital. I, as I got older, I realized that I probably was never going to be in a band again, Yeah, but I wanted to be in music somehow. Okay. And by some, I was going to school for photography and there was an assignment that basically was shoot something you've always wanted to shoot, but never had the chance to. Mm -hmm. And I was like a show, like a concert. Yeah. So I reached out to this local band and I was like, Hey, can I take some pictures at your show? Mm -hmm. And they said, yes. And then they reposted my photos and a guy who was like, I'm going to start a magazine hit me up and was like, have you ever interviewed bands? Have you ever done? I was like, I've never done any of that stuff, but I'm down. Like I yeah. would just want to be involved. Yeah. You know? And from there, like that type of drive, kind of pushed me into the music industry okay. where it was like one minute I'm like shooting bands, interviewing bands, like next thing I know I'm a publicist. Uh, I just like managing bands. I just started doing all these things just because I networked so well and mm -hmm. knew so much. And mm -hmm. the, like, I don't know, I, I, I go to so many shows and I analyze music mm -hmm. to like this weird degree mm -hmm. where I like have like a notebook where I'm like writing down like, things I think a band could do better, not mm -hmm. criticizing them necessarily, but thinking about those things that would push them over the edge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what like drew you to music in the first place? Like is anyone in your family, like really heavily involved in music or no? no? Um, okay. My dad is like an artist. Um, my mom, she's a nurse, but I think the reason that I love music so much is because it, represents every emotion that a human can have mm -hmm. and when i was a kid i didn't really have like a lot of friends or even people to connect with but music always felt like it could comfort me mm -hmm. or help me change my moods so like mm -hmm. i guess in a, i just like became consumed by it in yeah. a sense i would i would search things out based on like emotional needs for myself it, it sounds weird but it was just kind of like yeah you know i want to find like the saddest song possible <laughs> i want to find a song that'll make me happy if i'm feeling like crap yeah so like you know yeah. that kind of thing you know what i mean i mean in in the music industry like the great thing about it is you like no matter what everyone has some sort of place in it like no matter how weird you are you will find friends in the music industry eventually so, yeah. but no, that really is like the beauty of it, of the fact that you're able to, I don't know, like maybe be from this small town or whatever and still like be able to find a couple friends yeah. and like, hey, let's do a band. Okay. Can you talk a little bit more about that band? Like, did you guys do many live shows or anything? Yeah. Um, we, uh, when we first started, we started playing like high school, like talent shows and mm -hmm. stuff. And mm -hmm. we were very heavy and okay. it didn't really fit the vibe of what <laughs> our friends and family wanted yeah, to hear. Yeah, like farm town. <laughs> yeah, small, like country music was like, yeah, really popular yeah. where I came from. So, 
um, we felt like we had something going musically. Uh Um, so we moved to Boston and when we were in Boston, we met a guy who wanted to be our manager and he set us up with like a ton of gigs. Um, but during that time there was like no real social media except for MySpace. Yeah. Um, so we would like, I think that's where I like developed my, um, personality for being able to like create shows because Mm -hmm. I am the kind of person who will like invite anyone I have the chance to talk to, to come to shows because of that like upbringing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Where we'd have to go to other band shows and be like, Hey, if you like this band, my band is playing next Friday. (laughs) Here's our demo. Come. And you just hope they would show up. It was a whole different time of music where, you know, posters and, 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 talking to them face to face is what got them to shows. Yeah. Now, you know, people are like, Hey, I made some Instagram posts. But yeah. Yeah. I still like, can't get out of that thing that I had. So yeah, we played like a lot of shows in Boston Okay, and we were doing really well, but you know, like life pulls everyone yeah. apart and yeah. it kind of became more of the, you know, a couple of members, like it was right after high school. So a lot of our yeah. friends were like, well, you know, my mom thinks I should go to college yeah. <laughs> and I, even my family yeah. all the time was like, this isn't sustainable. Like yeah. you can't be in a metal band the rest of your life. You know, it was that kind of thing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I yeah. It was just kind of like, you know, everybody was on me all the time and you know, like you got to get insurance. What about health insurance? What about? <laughs> and eventually we all caved and next thing you know, like we were just kind of, but you found it back, so yeah, really you won. <laughs> the only one from our band to be doing anything music-wise, except um, our old keyboard player does a lot of, like, um, he he came out with an album, but it's more just kind of, like, you know, experimental yeah. noise yeah. type of stuff. But it's, you know, they all have, like, families and things now, yeah. so they're just doing whatever. Well, you know what? If, if you're uh, one of Derek's old bandmates out there, you... <laughs> I encourage you to find your old passion and you know what? Maybe we'll get the band back together. You never know. We have talked about it. <laughs> We've had like random moments of just like, wouldn't it be cool if, like, to do something, if? but we're not even sure if anyone would care at this point. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be front, I'll yeah. be front row. <laughs> okay. So can I ask, so, well, also I would say it's pretty cool that you, you guys, even though it was like, oh, it's a high school band. Like a lot of high school bands don't make it out of high school. So at least yeah. you were working and i feel like that kind of shows a drive that you had from a very young age to that reflects in your work now of okay well maybe you're not necessarily doing your own music anymore but you are still very active in the music community and like drive yourself in the work that you do yeah so it's it's really cool that you did that but can i ask if you so you were the singer Mm -hmm. so like do you enjoy singing like yeah. Did you grow up singing or doing anything like that? <laughs> I feel like it was another, uh, like a way to release emotions uh-huh. for me. Cause like, I don't know, I came from a, like, like I said, a, a boring place, but also, you know, my mom was a very strict person and I felt like all, you know, like as a, I feel like when you're young, everything seems like so dramatic. Mm-hmm. End of the world, you get it grounded. Still feels that way yeah. For me. yeah. So like I'm like <laughs> I'm the only kid who doesn't have a car. I'm angry. I need to write a song and yell about it. You know, like that was my, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That was my youth. It was like I had no other way of expressing this stuff except through songs. So I'm like up there yelling about like my anger towards my overbearing mother. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. Where you know it was it was fun it just felt like it was a way for me to express myself and you know it was fun i was also good at writing poetry so i okay i put the two things together yeah you know yeah yeah does anyone in your family do photography like outside of you so you went to school for photography but how did you kind of get involved in that my dad uh he did photography okay Uh, he was like really good like at illustration drawing, Mm -hmm. he's always really artistic. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of like inspired me um, in all the things that he did. So I, I saw like his portfolio of photos of me when I was like a little kid and I was like, wow, dad, this is really good stuff. And I, I don't know. I just like to just, kind of like fell in love with being able mm-hmm. to like capture moments. Mm-hmm. So that's is he I, the one who got you a camera or like, did you have to save up for it? Or like, uh, how did I that saved work? up for okay. my own. Yeah. Nice. I, it was like, I was just started off on just taking photos of my phone all the time. Mm-hmm. And people were like, that's pretty good for a iPhone photo. Yeah. So okay. next thing you know, I'm like, yeah. 
buying cameras. Did you do you still have like your first camera that you no, had? no, I actually oh. wish I had it because I loved that camera, yeah. even though there's nothing I could really do with it now in yeah. terms of like megapixels and all that yeah. stuff. But I kind of do wish I had it. I do know the person I sold it to who I could probably hit up and ask if she still has it, but yeah. Or like sneak in. Yeah, sweet. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things where like she was like, oh, you know, like I wish I had a camera and I had just gotten a better one. So I'm like, you could have my old one. It yeah, like, I gotcha. I gotcha. You know, I, as you can tell, probably I'm a very, um, I get attached to my things. So I'm always like, oh no, I can't get rid of this. Like this is my first whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm working on it, but um, that, that's pretty cool. So as far as like music goes, what... Obviously, so you and I were talking, you're like, I'm a local junkie. I love going to all kinds of different local shows. Yeah. Um, artists that you have seen go from, like, no fans to, you know, literally getting nominated for Grammys, whatever it be. But is there, do you, are, so are you pretty good at listening to all different kinds of music? Like, yes. if I were to go through your liked songs, would it be yes. a pretty eclectic? Yeah. Okay. I listen to everything. Okay. Like, I know people say that kind of thing a lot. Yeah. But I, I... It's almost as if like you're trying lots of different flavors of stuff mm -hmm. and you're like, this tastes good. This doesn't taste good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can still find something that you weren't expecting to taste good. Mm -hmm. Like lately I've been obsessed with like 1940s and 15 or 1940s Ooh. and 50s <laughs> jazz music. Okay. Yeah. Like old school stuff like this guy, his name is Bobby Hackett. I become obsessed with his music uh -huh. and I never even knew what it was before, yeah. but I heard it on like Spotify and the next thing you know, I'm buying all his albums and you know, just, I don't know. I went through a period of my life about 10 years ago where I decided to write down all of the charting songs from 1953 all the way to 1961 to see if I could listen to how rock and roll developed. It was Dang. just, it was like a, a mission of mine. You know what I mean? Like you could have had like a thesis on list. it. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I worked overnights and I was really bored. So okay, I okay. went online and I was like sitting at my computer researching old, like charts, lists, uh, mm -hmm. album releases from every artist. And I would go find that song and put it on like massive, massive playlists. Okay. And I just listen and listen. Cause I was like, like Elvis and yeah, things yeah. like that. But there's so many more artists that, you know, only have like one or two hits that right. have like vanished right. and nobody ever talks about them because right. they weren't massively influential. And I was even thinking about that earlier when you and I were talking, you're like, there are so many small artists where, you know, maybe they don't, they don't really get the opportunities from journalists or from podcasts yeah. or whatever, because, you know, it's like, oh, well, we have a fee if you want to come on our show, whatever it be. And that I thought about that, and you you think about all like the artists from before social media, before yeah. you could really market yourself. Like it's so oversaturated now, to where it's like, man, there's probably a lot of artists out there who like had really great music back in the day, but no one knows about them. Yeah, no one knows about them. So there's even regional artists who are huge in the on the West Coast. They tour yeah. from like Washington all the way down through California, sell at every venue, but they never come to the East Coast yeah. for one reason or another. Yeah life doesn't work out they have right. families just whatever and right. like sometimes i'm like i want to experience those bands if i can yeah you know? yeah do do you like do you even have like a ballpark of how many shows you think you've been to uh i was actually thinking about that on my way over <laughs> probably over a thousand or okay. more um, okay just even I, I don't know. It's probably, it's hard to say really. Yeah. I, I look, think back and I like think about all the shows and then sometimes I'm like, Oh, I was at that show, but yeah, it's been, yeah, I've been going to shows since I was like 19. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so I also want to touch on something that you mentioned was you're like, Oh, like I went through and then I went and bought this album. So do you still like buy physical copies or do you like, okay. Yeah. Okay. I have very a cool. ton of vinyl. I, mm -hmm. I am part of like the Nashville, like vinyl club. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Very been, cool. I, I didn't it, never heard of that. It's awesome. If you like vinyl or even remotely are interested in collecting vinyl, they're mm -hmm. the people to know because they do this thing, uh, every last Friday at this place called no quarter. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's oh, like, yeah. A yeah. The, the like arcade. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's I, super fun. Mm -hmm. And you can bring three, uh, well, 
you get to play 15 minutes of whatever music you want okay. and you talk to people about music and you can trade albums and just, yeah, it's awesome. It's, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I buy a lot of vinyl. That's my thing. I, I, I used to buy like um, CDs a lot, but mm-hmm. I've kind of like faded into the vinyl world. Yeah. Yeah. I am obviously a collector of things and I have some vinyls. Uh, I wouldn't say I necessarily collect them. Like the stack that I have is probably like, this thick maybe um but i do like have a lot of cds from when i was younger that i still collect a little bit of i obviously collect dvds but man vinyls are expensive sometimes that's yeah. that's i only like hold up with them where like cds I, some people are like i like collecting cds because it's cheaper whereas like i know vinyl obviously kind of has the aesthetic and the sound and like now all the colorful pressings yeah. and everything but it, it's an expensive hobby. It is. It can be, it can be for sure. <laughs> but the thing I feel like I am benefiting is that I buy a lot of old vinyl yeah. and I go to like antique stores True. and yeah, try yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. like, you know, bargain bin, yeah. I guess. And yeah. sometimes you can find some amazing stuff because a lot of the things I'm listening to, nobody cares about anymore. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So that's true. That's true. Like I highly doubt most people are like, I want that Bobby Hackett album, but <laughs> you know, so you like upstairs at McKay's like the one who's yes. just rifling through every little box. Yeah. I'm yeah. That per- I yeah. literally, even today I did it. I went to oh, Bono yeah. and spent like three hours there just going through. Oh yeah. And I bought like eight Patty page albums, <laughs> but I only spent like 20 bucks, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So can you talk a little bit more about being like a music journalist and, meeting these artists i don't know i just i'm very curious about that because i don't know really anything about that world yeah oh man um so maybe like nine years ago ten years ago is Mm -hmm. when i first got into like interviewing the bands Mm -hmm. and i started out doing something similar to what you're doing in the sense of trying to like have a space where i would invite people because i like interviewing face to face and Mm -hmm. recording it more than transcribing something Mm -hmm. even though that becomes like a uh, uh, necessary evil sometimes yeah, because yeah. some bands like, um, for example, do you know, do you know who the kills are? They're like a, they're like a famous band that's having a resurgence right now. They, um, I don't know, they're like indie rock, but anyway, so they're playing Brooklyn Bowl uh, in May, I think. I'm interviewing them, but mm-hmm. they only allow like recorded audio. Oh, so when okay, I go okay. there, I have to record it on my phone and then transcribe it or I gotcha. write an editorial based on the interview rather than something like this, which mm-hmm. in my opinion is way better. Yeah. Um, but I don't currently have the like notoriety to record yeah. all of my interviews. Yeah. But um, I just like felt like. I love talking and getting Mm -hmm. to know things that like I wasn't reading about in Rolling Stone Mm -hmm. or, you know, asking them like random things or like Mm -hmm. asking them about like the harder parts of the music industry or how it felt to like gain success or their favorite moments on stage. And sometimes their answers are so random. You like, I'm like, I would have never known this. Mm -hmm. I try to like think of things that nobody else has ever asked. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like I also am, I also like to think about, okay, what have, what has not been asked before in other interviews, but also I always tell, I always tell all our guests, um, I guess I didn't tell you, no, I think I did actually. I always say, if you want us to cut something out, we happily will. If I bring something up that you're not comfortable talking about, totally, we can move on. Like it's, I do not care, but I'm also just such a nosy person. So I'm like, okay, so tell me about that song where you like broke up with that person and you're still heartbroken about it. Yeah. <laughs> and so just things like that too, where I'm like, I want to know you on it. Like I, I told you earlier, I want to become friends with these people. Yeah. Like I genuinely enjoy the people that we have on. Yeah. Shout out to all of our old guests and hopefully future guests. Um, just I, and I want to go to your shows. I'm always like, tell me when your next live show yeah. is. I will try and be there. That's me. So, yeah, yeah. So, it's just, I really appreciate that. Like, as I told him that, I was like, oh, I'm kind of nervous now. I'm like, my interview skills, so we'll see <laughs> no, how they man, are. you're awesome. You actually, you know, you have a talent for it because you're a Thank people you. person. And yeah. I think that sometimes it's like, that's what the whole interview thing is. It's more than just, I, I hear a lot of artists tell me that they kind of get bored with the just, someone comes up with like, a script and yes. like oh yeah who inspires you and they're like everyone asks us the same yeah. thing but yeah. like just talk to us yeah. and you flow i always like have like three or four questions that i want to like 
ask yep. and then I'm like, we'll Flow have a the conversation. conversation. Yeah. Yep. 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 So did you also, since kind of getting into journalism, did you also, what, did, did you write a lot growing up? Yeah. Okay. I was always in English. Okay. Like I read a lot. I write a lot. That was always like my main thing. If I wasn't like going to be in a band, I wanted to be like an English teacher. I it can just, see that. Yeah. I can see that. It was always just what yeah. I was good at. I like talking about books too, Yeah, you yeah. know, and that kind of thing. But it's like books can be like a, a life escape. They take you to like fantasy worlds or learning about things, you know, and yeah. that's the same with music. It's like a journey to some other place yeah. to me. Okay. So you're a big reader then? Yeah. I, I wish I was reading. a bigger reader. I'm I, I'm like, I need to work this brain. <laughs> but I, I used to be really good at it. Shut up, Dale. <laughs> I listen to a lot of audiobooks, too, now. Okay, yeah, I do do that, yeah. Spotify offers the free audiobooks. Now, oh, my God, so. I just discovered that, and yeah. I was like, I was like, what in the... Yeah. I know, I was like, what That's in amazing. the world? They have, like, new books on yeah, there. Tons. Like, they have a lot of books on there. Yeah. So, I'm like, let me read Twilight, let me read Britney's, Britney I, Spears' memoir. That was memoir. the first audiobook I it ever was the, heard yep, on Spotify. Yeah, yep, I just thought same. to myself, I just want to know what her story is. I'm nosy. Know? Like, yeah. yeah, no, it, it was it was a really good book. Also, if her parents are listening to this podcast, as Wendy said, death to all of them because yeah. they are. Oh, they're terrible. I also got really mad at Justin Timberlake for all yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And, he. Oh. You know, <laughs> my guess. I don't David know. Over here. <laughs> I just. I was just like, man, I had no idea that all I know, those things. Like, I know, that, and I like Justin Timberlake, yeah. so I was like. This is really disappointing. I mean, I'll still listen to like Crummy River probably, but I won't yeah. like it. <laughs> I think the, though it highlighted a part of the music industry that not a lot of people think about is that very much Justin so. Timberlake probably wasn't a malicious person, uh, yep. but he was pushed into behaving a certain yep. way for publicity, yep. clout, like yep. to gain attention. And you know, it's like, hey, tell everyone this is about Britney, and then people pay more attention than if he's yep. just like, yep. you know what I mean? It's like those types of things yep. that artists got to do to like get the yeah. public interested. Bring out the Britney doll. Bring out the Britney. Doll. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Hannah Montana. Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, the early two thousands for media and such are just yeah. a whole mess. It is kind of cool though that you start out as a band. I meant to mention this, like kind of in the MySpace era, because that was like yeah, really big, yeah. and that's where a lot of artists were kind of getting discovered mm -hmm. and Warped Tour and all that. So that that's that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so we're going to take a little bit of a break, and uh, we'll come back, and I want to talk about your agency. So. Okay. Have you been enjoying Successfully Unsigned? Then check out all of our other content on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and everywhere you can stream podcasts. Don't forget about our exclusive artist interviews and performances right here with Successfully Unsigned. Join us and like, comment, follow, subscribe, share with all of your friends, and tell us what your thoughts are about being an artist in the music industry. Welcome back, y'all. Um, okay, so Derek, I didn't realize this. When you had reached out, I was like, oh, cool, like we, a photographer, like we'll definitely get, get him on. Um, and then I started doing a little more research, and so you have your own agency right yeah. you're a publicist yeah so can you just talk a little bit more about that like how that started and just your journey through it 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 kind of started because being a journalist it i'm on the other end of the publicity spectrum and all these people write me emails every day asking me to like check out bands and mm -hmm. like hey listen to this song listen to that song mm -hmm. interview my band mm -hmm. um and based on getting to know so many people in the PR world, then I just decided that if I m mirrored or mimicked the things that I was getting, mm -hmm. it's not that difficult. It literally is sending out email blasts and coming up with like a, a story or something interesting to tell a magazine and be like, hey, you know, like – this person has this story and trying to come up with like the interesting aspects of the artistry or the artist. And I just decided that I could do it and I've been doing it for a while. Um, I guess I would consider myself like an entry level PR person okay. because I, I don't know, like some of the bigger companies, like they charge a lot of money and mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm like one of those people who sees it more as like, I'm going to try to get you some SEO, try to get something so that, for example, if you're like an upcoming band and someone hears your song and they want to know more about you and they Google you and they don't find anything but your website and your bio, like I think, and I tell bands, I want to get it so that they can hear some interviews or read a couple things, not necessarily trying to get you into Rolling Stone, even though I hit up Rolling Stone on your behalf. I think I just do it more so that new fans can get more of a picture of who you are, especially Mm -hmm. if you're new or you're struggling to like Mm -hmm. get more out there about yourselves just than songs. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I feel like that's one of the things that I'm like good at is just trying to like come up with ways for bands just to, just have like a little bit more mm-hmm. space in the internet, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? Is there anything that you can maybe like elaborate more on someone who wouldn't necessarily know the music industry or like, especially an artist, like almost like, I guess maybe an elevator pitch. Yeah. I think of it like, like when a band gets signed, there are obviously labels out there, but what they are is kind of glorified banks Yeah, where they can fund marketing campaigns. <laughs> they can work with like the best publicists, PR mm-hmm. companies, the people out there who are like, you know, I, I can run your Facebook ads and mm-hmm. I can get you mm-hmm. on like the Times Square thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, they they have con- connects with radio stations to get mm-hmm. you played. And then there's that, like, also the other world where bands can do it organically now if they're blowing up on TikTok. Right. They right. don't need to, like, get that bank right. because they've got the traction on their own because people are like, hey, I heard this song on TikTok. Yep. I'm going to go stream the heck out of this yep. band. Um, so, like, I feel like um, I help them navigate to see what it is they need because there are bands out there that can write the greatest songs ever, but they freeze in front of a camera and they okay. don't know what to do on yep. social media at yep. all. And then there are people who are like, I know how to write a catchy song that everyone will use on TikTok and dance to. Mm-hmm. And they do it so well. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, uh, just like bands like Dawn, you know, yeah. like they're great at social media. Their TikTok is so good. Yeah their, yeah. their TikTok is amazing. And, you know, they write great songs, but not everybody has that dual threat thing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just got to like figure out what exactly a band needs. And sometimes Mm -hmm. they do need a label or sometimes they do need like some type of funding Mm -hmm. to help push them along rather than hoping it happens organically or viral, you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. Especially in today's world where it's like, it it is still like very oversaturated. I always see the thing where it's like, man, I wish I had downloaded TikTok when it first came out versus in 2020 when everyone else did. Because going viral on TikTok back in 2019 is so different than going viral now. It's a lot easier to go viral. And I mean, like I've gone viral a couple of times. Being viral is so different versus like back in the day. And it's like, oh, you got 500,000 views. Like that's crazy. Whereas now it's like, Oh, you got you got two million views, and, or even like five million views. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's cool, that's cute, but I do it every single day. Yeah, like it, it's TikTok is such a weird thing, especially involved in the music industry. It, yeah, it's so, one of those things that drives me nuts because yeah. a lot of labels. I mean, I pitch to labels for artists mm-hmm. and even music festivals. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're like, "What is your TikTok following?" Because they look at it like. If you're going to play their festival and you talk about their festival, if you have millions of followers, you're advertising yeah. to those people about their festival yeah. and it's like free advertising for them. Yeah. Even if you're not as good as say a band who's got 500 followers mm-hmm. on TikTok, they would take the band who has more of a reach mm-hmm. because they know it's like free advertising and yeah. money they don't have to yeah. spend. But I appreciate you doing that service because I feel like I've been seeing a meme go around recently, especially with artists that's like me when I just like want to make good music that people enjoy, but I now also have signed up to be like my own social media content creator, my own publicist, my own label, whatever. And it's just, I mean, it's very overwhelming. Like even in our own podcasts, I do our social media. Meanwhile, these guys do a lot of the like hard work, but social media is hard. Like, and then on top of that, like I try and promote my own TikTok that I, you know, sometimes do, but it's, it's just like, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. And like, oh man, I got to post every day. Well, now I got to think of something to post every day. Well, now, like, what if this clip isn't good enough? Or man, I worked really hard on this clip and it 
gotten no views, but this clip where I'm just like sneezing, yeah. everyone watched, and this is somehow the one that blew up, and it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So I'm glad that you're, despite your frustrations with it, yeah. you're still offering your help and advice yeah. through the knowledge that you have to help artists out. What, what's the name of the agency? It's called Scarlet Reverie. Okay. Um yeah, I like the color red a lot. It's a color of passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and reverie is kind of like being lost in like a thought process. I get lost okay. in thoughts a lot. Okay. You know, it's a very like English English teacher uh, yeah. agency name, which <laughs> yes. is because I did not know where reverie meant. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I I I just kind of like helping. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's almost like I vicariously live through new bands because. You know, like, I don't know, I can't really do it anymore. Right. Not that I couldn't, but it's not the same. Right. So, I don't know, you know, just, like, and, helping people out. And I feel like when it comes down to it, what what is the one thing that I feel like every fan, especially in music, loves is feeling like, oh, I was there before that person got big. Yeah. I knew them when they just had 14 people at their concert, and now they're huge. And so, it's really cool that you get to experience that yeah. a lot of... Like you're the cool guy of like, oh yeah, I knew them before they were big. Yeah, like, that's so that's that's cool. That's I, cool. I and good for like you for it. not bragging about yeah. it. I'm gonna brag about yeah. it for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that part. I definitely yeah. do. But it's like, I also think about it from a fan perspective because there's some people who are like, you know, you got to think like some of these artists are tortured souls in some way where mm-hmm. they're like they go through a traumatic experience, they're writing about it, and they just want to like push their music to people to find comfort because they're like, Hey, maybe you can relate to this. And then you got some like industry people who are like, you know, you need a huge TikTok following. You got to be a social media influencer. And all you really want to do at the end of the day is get your music out there and hope that somebody feels it. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Like I try to like at least help bridge the gaps. Yeah. And it sounds like maybe you, you, you do it in a very like organic way of like, look, I know that sometimes it's really frustrating that we have to deal with TikTok and being a content creator and all this stuff. While TikTok has been great for the music industry, it is also done a lot of harm. And so it's nice that you're kind of like, I get it, but let me help you out. And so I I just really appreciate that you've done that for the industry and kind of the local scene. Yeah. There's also a lot of like what I I like to call them like financial or emotional predators out there where Mm -hmm. they are like, Hey, if you spend $1,500 on my music marketing course, you too can go viral. And these, these musicians who are just hungry for any type of attention, give their money to these people. And I'm like, you know, pump the brakes on just throwing your money around, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to, like I would say, like invest in really good quality recordings first yeah, yeah. and then let everything else be built out from there because some yeah, of these that's guys, yeah, some of these artists are like, oh, my friend Steve, you know, he recorded me in his basement and, you know, I'm like, is he like got a degree? Does he know what he's doing? He's like, well, he bought this program online <laughs> and not that there's anything wrong with yeah. people trying to make music, but if you're really like, if your goal is to really try to get your stuff out there more, like investing in good quality, mm-hmm. like interest instruments band members like Mm -hmm. production because they skip over that and they're like i just want everyone to like hear it so like can i pay this like playlisting company a thousand dollars a month to Mm -hmm. push my mediocrely recorded song out there and then when people hear it they're like i mean this sounds like crap and no offense but i'm just saying that a lot of bands like try to shortcut all these things and yeah at the end of the day it's like you got to capture them sonically first and then yep you know or You know, just there's so many like little pieces. And I think like people take advantage of that desire to be seen or heard as a musician. And I Mm -hmm. really like even working with Anastasia, as long as I have, I've noticed that like these people will pop up. They have really well done websites and they're like, oh, we're this marketing company. And next thing you know, you're paying them like $1,500 a month to run Facebook ads that you could do yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, why are you taking advantage of these people? Yep. It drives me nuts. Yeah. But I mean, just... Ain't that the history of the music industry taking yeah. advantage of people? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so pivoting a little bit, how um how what brought you to Nashville? Anastasia like, oh, okay. brought me to Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Um like I I interviewed her um maybe like five or six years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um and we became really close and she would talk to me about all the things she was going through in her career, just as a friend for like mm-hmm. a really long time. 
pandemic hit, we just stayed in contact. And then after things started getting better, um, she came to New York working on this like financial deal type Mm -hmm. thing. And we hung out and it was more than just a friendship. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you got to come to Nashville and, you know, see what, you know, you just help me with my career and yeah, let's yeah. see what we can do together. Cause she felt like we would work really well together as a team. Mm-hmm. And we do it. It can be tough um, managing and working with your girlfriend. Yeah. Um, I've definitely learned a lot of like yeah. hard lessons yeah. and towing the line between being a understanding, compassionate boyfriend and a by the book, we got to get this stuff done yeah. business person yeah. and trying not to like, you know, Because every artist is different and sometimes you can be like, hey, so-and-so, like, go do these things I tell you and they just do them. Mm -hmm. And other times, you know, it's like you're dating that person and they're like, Mm -hmm. you know, oh, babe, don't you just want to like stay in bed all day? You know what I mean? I'm like, we got to get this stuff done. (laughs) You know what I mean? So those are the challenges of like, you know, but her and I. You know, we definitely work really well together. She's like one of the most creative humans. Like it just sometimes it pours out of her brain and I feel like I'm trying to catch it with a bucket sometimes. And, you know, but I I can see that just from the like little bit that I've seen through her social media. Yeah. Yes. Uh, It's been it's a process, but like, you know, like I love it. It Mm -hmm. keeps me on my toes, but I'm always like learning. And that's one of the things I'm like always trying to learn as much as I can. I go to as many conferences as I can. I network with as many people mm-hmm. and as many big people in the industry that I can get in front of, or even bands, I ask them about their journey or what it was that like got the attention of so-and-so or whatever. So mm-hmm. I like remember those things and try to like help other yeah. bands by using those same strategies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. That's smart. <laughs> um, so did you, are you, are you, do you still do like journalism and interviewing and yeah. stuff okay yeah. okay are I, you under a company or yeah okay. i work for a magazine out of california called top shelf music magazine okay um i just kind of freelance with them like gotcha. it's kind of um it's kind of like if i feel like doing something mm-hmm. i do it they don't mm-hmm. push me to do anything yeah. um whereas the first two magazines that i was a part of i was like the editor assignment editor gotcha. social gotcha. media guy and it became overwhelming in the sense that like it's just, you know, it's hard to do so many things and also mm-hmm. corral your journalists all over the country. And mm-hmm. I loved it, but it was just, it's a very time consuming, especially yeah. if you're not making any money doing it. You know, mm, like a yeah. lot of blogs yeah. and magazines, they don't really pay you. And even if you do have a magazine that's like bigger level, they yeah. will be like, we'll, 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 you know, pay you to go to this thing. You'll get free tickets to this festival, but you're not getting like an actual paycheck. Yeah. So, yep. you know, it just kind of becomes like. Shout hard. out to all the kids who got a journalism degree. Cause yeah. I did not get one, but I <laughs> got one that's close and I ain't using it. So I think that <laughs> I the, to me, the key is the future of journalism is in visual content. Yep. Yep. Because people watch videos. Agreed. They don't read articles mm-hmm. anymore. No. And I always save them to read later, and uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> it has to be super engaging yeah. or, unfortunately, very clickbaity yeah. for me to start reading. It has to be yeah. like a sensationalized headline so yeah. that I'm like, what? Yeah. And then I click. I'm like, wait, okay. This, yep. is, this is just – it got me. But yep. Yep. I like watching music reviewers and, and people like you guys because, you know, I think that that kind of stuff – uh, since we're always on our phones, you know, you can get like a quick clip of a yeah. person answering a cool question or something right. like that. Right. So <laughs> I want to talk a little more about your photography because uh, that was kind of what I originally brought you on for. So what are like some highlights in your career, especially as far as photography, or if you want to talk about other career highlights in the industry? Um. Well, some of my Biggest highlights, I would say, are bigger bands sharing Mm -hmm. my photos. Like the feeling of like a big artist sharing something that you did. Like Banks, I I don't know if you know who she is. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Like a big pop star. She shared my stuff, and uh, Paramore shared my stuff once. And you got me. You got me. You got me. But it that's so cool. It like felt insane at the time because you know like not only does the artist appreciate your imagery but their fans like pour in and start like messaging you and yeah it just just felt really good to like feel like out of all the photographers that were there that night they liked my photo the best and not 
that it's a bragging thing. It just feels good because you're like, thank you so yeah. much. Once again, Haley. I'm going to brag for you. His photos are obviously good. <laughs> if Paramore was posting them. Yeah. But th- uh. those, are, those are like concert highlights. Other just, you know, just like, I feel like, um, everything that I've done in terms of like photos with Anastasia, because mm-hmm. we've done so many crazy types of photo shoots. Mm-hmm. We did this one where we covered her in whipped cream from head to toe. It kind of um, was a take on another album that used to be popular back in the seventies, mm-hmm. but the, it was for a guitar company out of Mexico called cream guitars and they shared stuff and they like love us now. Mm-hmm. And they're like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, Anastasia has one of their guitars, but they're, they're amazing. And they are like, that's really cool. Yeah. It's just like that kind of thing where like a big company is like, thank you. This is amazing. We're going to yeah. share it everywhere. Yeah. Like it feels really good to like be doing things like that yeah. because before I was like, I don't know, you know, like doing weddings and mm-hmm. parties and mm-hmm. events and real estate, like all that stuff yeah. is like, like a thankless type of mm-hmm. photography where, mm-hmm. you know, you'll get a paycheck but nobody's like, hey, did you see his interior photos of that hotel? You know what yeah. I mean? Like nobody yeah. cares. They just right. see those online and they're like, oh, this looks like a nice place to stay. Yeah. But yeah. they don't know anything about the people who do it. So yeah. when you get recognized in that world, it feels really cool. Yeah. So. so are there any bands that you were like, oh, like I was a big fan of this person and now I have gotten to work with them? Yeah. Um, well, the Black Pumas is okay. definitely one yep. of them because, uh, you know, I I took photos of them and I met them when they weren't that popular. And then when you go to a show that they've sold out and, you know, you're taking photos. There's also this band from France called Zeal and Ardor that the long story short of them is I was the first journalist in America to interview them or even write about them. They hit me up through social media. Like, thank you so much. Like nobody in America knows us. Their very first tour, they played a show in New York city and I was the only person allowed to bring a camera. All these other big magazines, they, they were like angry, like metal injection in, 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 huge blabbermouth like they were all their journalists were there at this show and they were like how did you get the ability to take pictures of them and i'm like because i was the first and they recognized that i was the first that i mean they're not like a gigantically massive massive band yeah they were i mean they're big in the metal world and i was just like when i heard their sound i was like this is so different and unique Mm -hmm. i have to interview Mm -hmm. them and that was like the kind of thing where i feel like that to me is one of the biggest highlights in the world of yeah my journalism so photography cool. thing yeah. because I was taking photos when everyone else was told they couldn't bring a camera yep, just yep. because they were rewarding me for caring about them before anyone else did. But the, I, oh, that's, that's yeah. a really cool, I really love that story. I don't know. I I think what it is, is just that you're such a, from the little bit we've talked in a couple hours, you're such like an organic person. And I, I think that really comes across where it's like, and there are other, you know, organic people in the yeah. industry, but the fact that you're just and you do the research like you put in the work to discover these people and to i i don't know it just i i yeah. really admire your work i really Thanks, admire man. it so is there like a dream artist that you really wish that you could photograph for hmm. that you haven't gotten to yet um let's see i'm i think about this cuz i've i've gotten a lot of the ones i really really wanted to mm-hmm. um I don't know, like maybe uh, like somebody like the Rolling Stones, maybe Mm -hmm. I I know they're like on the the end of their musical lives. Maybe who knows? Maybe you take their last photos. Yeah. (laughs) But you know, like bands like that are like, you know, the bands that are like legacy acts that are still around that I would like to like, you know, do anything with really, you know, like and the Aerosmiths of the world or those kind of bands that are just like every once in a while they'll pop up to do like a last tour, that kind of stuff, I would say. Okay, very cool. Okay, well, we are going to take one more break and uh, we're going to come back and do our show and yell. (laughs) Nice. What's going on, guys? It's David here from Successfully Unsigned. We're having a ton of fun 
real quick i just want to thank everybody for the support that you guys have given us over the past year we've had a blast we would love for you to see more of our content to do that you can definitely subscribe to our youtube channel also check us out on tiktok and instagram another way you can support us is by following the link in the description to donate to the podcast thank you guys so much enjoy the rest of the show all right y'all Welcome back is your favorite segment of Successfully Unsigned, Show and Yell. Okay, so we have a segment called Show and Yell, um, which is a really dumb name, but it's literally just show and tell, but we just ask that you yell it. You don't have to, like, actually scream or anything, (laughs) but just be like, phone. Um, So just go ahead and show us your items. All right. Oh, man. Yeah. We got a lot. Press passes. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh. These are uh, press passes and photos. Are, I'm photo pass. Like every show you shoot, you get a photo pass. Like, and you get to stick it to your, you know. Man. And these are like everything that I've shot um, and got a press pass for. Like this one is for banks. This is okay. for a music festival called Night Lights Music Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them, like venues, have their own, which I think stink. Cause they're just like the generic thing. Oh yeah, it's thing. like I want to. I want to name drop the artist. Come yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> but like Stephen Wilson, I went to England to interview this guy. Okay, and he's one of like the most amazing interviews I've ever done. And uh, you know, like Hate Breed and just Cold War Kids. You know, like I collect and keep every single thing that mm-hmm. I do. Shaky Knees Music Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, because it just keeps like memories. Some of them like yeah. stick together. Um, I was gonna say, have you ever thought about putting it like in a book or a binder or something? I, I probably will someday. I've I have another bag of stuff. This is like a okay. set list from this band. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what are they called? Uh, man, I can't remember. But they were awesome. Yeah. It's just uh, so many shows. They all yeah. kind of bleed yeah. together. The this band, I do remember. Not that I can remember their name. <laughs> um, they were so good that. Um, the lead singer passed out at the end of the show because he exerted so much energy. Um, and you're, you're not rocking hard enough unless that's happening yeah. to you. Like I went backstage cause I was, a, it was in Austin. <laughs> they let me go backstage that's crazy. and he literally was like passed out on the ground. And I was like, you know, thinking, Oh, is he drunk? And yeah. his band was like, no, he overexerted himself. They like put ice packs on him and stuff. <laughs> it was crazy, but it was like, you know, one of those high energy shows. That, oh Yeah. You know? Yes, you should. Man, that's really cool. That's really cool. You, yeah, I feel like you should you should get a little book for it, or like maybe ask for like a Christmas gift or birthday gift. You're yeah, like, I need a little book for my uh, I do a little scrapbook. It, yeah, <laughs> there was another thing in here that um, because it it's kind of like the it was like a early okay so. The first magazine that I was ever a part of, Chimera Magazine, mm-hmm. we had these press passes made, and we. They looked so legit mm-hmm. that we started being able to get into shows we weren't even part of. <laughs> we would just walk into things with this. Yep. I would just be like, "Hey, I'm press," and they would see this. It's laminated. It like has like a, Dude. you know, like a reflective thing. Yeah. And I took advantage of this a lot. Yeah. Because there were times when you know, like I just wanted to like go backstage or yep. something, and I'd be like, "Hey, I'm press." And sometimes if you act like you know what you're yep. doing or you're supposed to be there. Like some security guards, like whatever. I don't care, yeah. you know. And it they always say like, has helped. just like dress up as like a maintenance worker or something. Yeah, to get in. Not that we're promoting. That, no, I mean I don't but... want anyone to stalk any bands <laughs> that way. But you know, there were times when I just yeah. kind of like I don't know. I just wanted to see what that world was like. Yeah, you know, I that's wasn't... super cool. So did you did you travel a lot, especially when you were yes. like part of magazines obsessively, like internationally a lot? Yeah, I traveled um, like. Pretty when I I started the first one, it was most I was in New York. I would go from one end of New York, like Buffalo, all the way back to New York City, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, and then I was like, I decided to plan a trip for three months to Europe, and I went over there and shot a band called At the Drive In, and also this band called Avatar and Stephen Wilson, and like a few. I was just like, it was like a vacation that I intentionally decided to start reaching out to like. Um, various bands and mm-hmm. seeing if I could shoot them in different country and I just wanted to experience music all over the world yeah like, every yeah. audience is different they all respond differently um, like in Sweden and stuff like I can't even really explain it but like even if you're in the heaviest 
metal band the community loves and supports you mm-hmm. they have clubs that play heavy metal instead of hip hop or techno or the, you know like you go over there and it's packed from front to back and they're playing death metal it's oh just a whole different culture and a party in sweden yeah <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to knock america or the audiences but i feel like nashville is kind of like a microcosm of what america is in terms of like the music scenes in the sense that like at, we always think bigger is better, bigger festivals, mm-hmm. bigger artists, mm-hmm. and people lose sight of like the local scene. And I mm-hmm. think uh, there are people I know that visit Nashville that are like, oh, you know, like I want to see country covers. I'm like, but you know, there's like really good original rock bands, country mm-hmm. musicians, mm-hmm. and there are people who live here who don't even know what venues have local bands. Yep. They're like, you mean Broadway? Like, Every time I go to a show, if it's a big band, I ask everyone around me, hey, if you like the band that you're here tonight, this nationally touring band, have you ever heard of this Nashville local band? And they're like, no, like, where do they even play? And I'm like, the Cobra, the East Room, you know? Literally so many places. Yeah, and they're like, I don't even know what those things are. I didn't even know those bands existed because my Spotify algorithm only shows me these bands. Yeah, And I, I, I struggle with trying to figure out a disconnect in fixing that with the the scene in a sense mm-hmm. of trying to get those people who will spend fifty dollars to go to Brooklyn Bowl to spend ten dollars to go see a band who's gonna be at Brooklyn Bowl someday. Mm-hmm. You know? I I feel like too like being very new in the Nashville music scene, I've seen like a lot of I don't know, I, I feel like people are uh, really nice uh, in talking to Atlanta from Hexproof she's from the or- Orlando music scene mm-hmm. and she's like it's very different up here I feel like people are a lot nicer <laughs> and maybe that's yeah. the southern hospitality I don't know but uh, I also just running into a lot of the same people and people just being a lot more supportive of each other so it's nice it's within that realm but I do agree there's probably a lot of people who are like I don't even know like yeah you go to Nashville for Broadway and it's like yeah well there's actually more than that <laughs> I promise I think that the the mentality of everyone's really nice because Anastasia says that a lot but I think the thing is that there's so many musicians and Mm, bands and people in the music industry in Nashville that they are collectively traumatized so they all support (laughs) each other really well because they're like hey my friend's in a band we gotta go see him because I want him to come to my show true true yeah I feel like the outsiders are where we gotta get those people who are like you know I work at you know, Marshall's or, you know, Hobby Lobby. Yeah. And I don't know that there's music venues to go yeah. to, but I think that in Nashville, I, the community of musicians, there's so many of them yeah. that they really try to like support each other and yeah. help each other out. And I love that. But yeah, coming from a place like Austin, where I would go see a local band and there'd be 500 people there that had never Ooh. heard them, but they were like, this venue puts on the best concerts. So we come yeah. here every Friday because they got some crazy cool band here. That's crazy. And like, I, I was like, I love this place. Yeah. That's really cool. I would have a hard time deciding which shows I would go to on any yeah. given night, but they love the live local music yeah. scene in Austin. Yeah. And here it's kind of like, it gets to the point where if you play too much, people are kind of like, you know, burnt out on you unless yeah. your show is so different and amazing every time. Yeah. But I think Nashville can be a tough place. For yeah, local that's bands. fair. It sounds like we need to be a little more hipster and be like, yeah, I'm going to hit up this local place. Um, I just encourage people to yeah. give it a chance. Oh, you yeah. Know? And they're, they're always so fun. And like, honestly, a lot of times local bands will like, play some sort of cover still because uh, Nashville's, you know, full of cover bands. I mean, Broadway is yeah. like all covers. Right. But, um, uh, like there was this local, one of the first local shows that I went to, uh, featured the band Vern, which I'm hoping we can get love them on sometime. Vern. I love, love Vern. Vern. Like I, I genuinely have their EP on repeat. Yeah. Um, so good. It, but they, they cover a song from one of my favorite movies, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Yeah. They cover black sheep, uh, the Brie Larson version. And I was like going into Atlanta. Was like I have never seen you like go that hard during a song. I was like, no, you don't understand. I am obsessed with this song, and so I really like their music. But but honestly, I heard that cover, and I was like, man, like I enjoyed I enjoyed their other music. But let me like check it out because I really just like their style, and they're also really good at being supportive and mm-hmm. sharing things. Oh, oh yeah. And um, yeah. so then I you know 
started listening to their music, I was like, oh, this is like actually really good yeah. now that I'm like taking the time to actually process yeah. what the music is. And I mean, I genuinely have them on repeat. So yeah, it's just stuff great. like that where like these little pockets where you never know kind of what you're going to find. Yeah. I had this like uh, idea that I wanted to start a meetup group. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of the website meetup, but it's like, you know, you coordinate group activities okay. and I was going to try to see if I could get like 50 people to join my like spontaneous local show group where you just show up to a band show. Cause sometimes I go to Cobra and there's like eight people there, but I always thought it would be like mind blowing to a band yeah. to have like 60 people that oh, you got so cool. to just show up at their show and have them be like, That's what really is cool going idea. on here? That's a really cool idea. Sometimes I think seeing an audience bigger than you imagined brings something else out of you as a performer. And oh, yeah. you're like, you know, I just haven't had the time to coordinate that, but I feel like it'd be so cool where we randomly yeah. pick a local show to go to. We're like this Wednesday, we're going to check out this band. We're going to surprise the hell out of them. And the next thing you know, you got like 60 strangers showing up to your yeah. show. Yeah. And that really, I feel like could make like a, a oh, motivational yeah. difference. I'd be so into that. <laughs> I, I, I just, the little bit that I've talked to you, Derek, like you're genuinely just, I can tell that you really truly care about people and like care about the scene and yeah, the keeping music alive and local music alive and helping those artists out. And I don't know, you're a very down to earth person. So I, I appreciate you and I'm looking forward to continuing to get to know you and yeah. hopefully seeing you at some more live shows. Definitely. And, and I'll probably hit you up for being like, Oh, Hey, I don't have anything to do this weekend. Uh, what's some good shows? Anytime. To to? Seriously. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and if any bands watch this, 100% chance that I will go to your show if you invite me. Yeah. That's my whole thing. I'm like, if a band reaches out, I'm even if I've never heard of them before, mm -hmm. if they ask me to go to their show, I'm like, they're making an mm -hmm. effort to try to get strangers. I know it's hard to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Sure, I will come spend 10 bucks to go to your show. Exactly. And maybe take pictures. Exactly. And here's the thing too, like I, I kind of have Atlanta as my you know local show buddy. And ultimately, like even if it's not necessarily our kind of music or whatever, like we still have fun because we're hanging out as friends. Yeah. We're going, we're getting, you know, dressed up mm -hmm. and going to the show and meeting people and networking. And then, you know, we go eat velvet taco afterwards. Shout out to velvet taco. velvet taco and, or eat Whataburger velvet taco is closed. Like whatever it is. Like, and I like, I have a good time. I have a good night out with my friend when it comes down to it. And so if anything else, even if you're like, Oh, like, I don't know if I necessarily want to go to a local show. You will probably have fun, even if maybe you aren't into their music. Mm -hmm. And also, sometimes, even when you're not into their music, they're just really nice people with, like, a really good personality and energy that sounds, like, backhanded. But it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, I've met artists where I'm like, oh, your music isn't necessarily my thing, not because I dislike it but mm. more just like i don't listen to that kind of music yeah. but your personality alone makes me want to support you makes me want to share your work makes me want to help you out so yeah. i don't know i just i really appreciate that you have similar feelings that yeah i do that i, do. I yeah. was like try to like talk to people and say you could spend ten dollars at starbucks mm -hmm. and just drink a cup of coffee you throw that cup of co uh coffee away and you just go on with your life. Obviously, people need coffee, but you could spend ten dollars and meet your new best friends. Yep. You can meet yep. like uh, just a, the coolest band ever. And like you said, even if you're not like completely into their music, there might be someone there that you connect with. Anything like just yeah. There's so many more opportunities yeah. when you're out in an experience yeah. rather than just sitting at home watching Netflix. Right. And plus, typically when you're going to local shows, it's multiple bands. So it's like the likelihood that yeah. you're not going to like any of the bands that perform, I feel like is typically pretty slim. Yeah. Unless you just are like, no, I only stick to this genre of music. I only like Morgan Wallen or whatever. Yeah. Then, okay, maybe it, the local scene is not for you. But for the most part, like, I, I think anyone could find joy in a oh, local yeah. show. So Definitely. Well, Derek, I really appreciate you... Uh, coming out today is there any like upcoming projects or anything that you want to talk about or promote um well we um, i mean i'm putting on that show at the east room february 22nd with anastasia elliott regal metrics and the afternooners i i'm gonna try and go <laughs> anyone who's seeing this i'm telling you anastasia elliott is amazing um but regal metrics i saw them at a music festival and it was the kind of show that gave me chills and i wanted them to come down here so bad that i it's hard for a band that's never played down here aside from a 
quick music festival yeah. to draw anyone. So like, I'm just trying to get people to come out to like experience mm. their greatness because I really feel like, you know, they're going to do great things. They sell out almost every show they play where they're from. It's just, this is a new area for them. Yeah. And I just want to share their great music with as many people who, yeah, it's sure. going to be a great night of music. I mean, yeah. every band is awesome and you know, there's going to be a ton of cool people there. Yeah. So. I'm going to try and go out and make excited for it. Yeah. All right. Uh, where can people follow you and pages and everything um, promote your agency yeah. and all that? Um, my website is scarletreverie.com. Okay. If bands need anything, even just consulting on mm-hmm. your career. Um, also, I have an Instagram photography page, Derek Jones Photography. It's pretty easy. And I also have a Scarlet Reverie Instagram page. But yeah, that's where I'm mostly active is Instagram and on just my website. Okay. So yeah. All right. Well, Derek, thank you so much. Thanks I for having me. I have really, really, really enjoyed this interview. Awesome. So, so much Looking fun. forward to talking more yeah. eventually. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Follow us at Successfully Unsigned on all platforms, Unsigned Podcast on TikTok, and go watch our stuff. Thank you. See you next time.